All right, what is up, guys? Welcome back to another Zoys review. And last time I realized with the new Hasbro Wild Liger, I forgot to use my second ring light to put a little more light directly on the subject, which was probably a mistake on my part. But overall, everyone seemed to really like that video quite a bit, showing off the uh, the comparisons down to the the nittiest and grittiest of little details between the Japanese version and the English Hasbro version. But today we have the HMM Cannon Tortoise, which this is actually the original print of the HMM Cannon Tortoise. You can see by the the older Zoids logo up there on the box, as opposed to the newer version, which had recently had its last printing in last year. So these should still be pretty common and easy to find if you're interested in picking one up and buying it. And uh, as well as the Buster Tortoise, which we'll talk about, and I believe they are also getting reissued yet again this year. So if you're interested in picking this kit up, it is currently available for pre-order on sites like AmiAmi and HLJ. So I recently built this. I, I think this is one of the ones I built over quarantine or like right before that. And... I actually really, really like this kit quite a bit. As much as the Cannon Tortoise is kind of this forgotten background Zoid in most of the anime, and it, it doesn't really do a whole lot as far as the grand scheme of things goes, as far as this model kit goes, and as far as my newfound appreciation for the Cannon Tortoise goes in the video games, I actually really, really like the Cannon Tortoise quite a bit now, and I'll make sure to go into that. So we'll start off with the lore and we'll kind of go into the model kit. So as far as the original battle story goes, the cannon tortoise was there pretty much from the beginning where after the, what, 30 year peace between the two factions, the when the war finally started back up again, the cannon tortoise was one of the staple zoids for the Helic Republic and sort of served as basically a tank. I mean, as, as it seems pretty obvious by the color scheme and the affixed cannon with a complete with turret at the top. The Cannon Tortoise is used for heavy artillery as well as a troop transport. You can kind of see that on the box art there, which I'll show off a little bit, and on the model kit itself, it actually has some features where it can uh, be sort of an armored transport to deploy infantry troops in the battle, which I think is pretty cool. But it essentially is a very small, very slow Zoid, and it can't really go up to battle with in like a head-to-head -head combat with something like the Saber Tiger, but is probably very effective at shelling uh, squadrons of Mulgas and things like that from afar from the... and also taking out buildings and structures and barricades and things like that that the infantry soldiers need to get into. The cannon array on there is, is quite effective at that. And both of the weapons on the cannon tortoise actually use... Uh, cooled liquid hydrogen, I believe, which is interesting. And uh, again, this cannon is primarily used at long range. So not a whole lot else as far as the battle story goes. It's not really seen in any very noteworthy encounters. It's mainly just similar to the Godos. Like I mentioned, this thing would be deployed alongside the Godos as sort of a small but mass production workhorse for the Helic Republic. You know, not a big, flashy, over-the-top protagonist the way that's not a Liger. Or any <laughs> Does you want my voice? A Liger! It's not a Liger or anything like that. It's just a uh, just a standard workhorse, mass production, all-around pretty well-balanced Zoid for the army itself. So, in the anime... It, in the, new, in the uh, Chaotic Century anime, it served almost exactly the same purpose. There was not very many opportunities for it to really show off it, any kind of special capabilities. It was mainly just deployed in large numbers alongside things like the Godos in large-scale battles between the Helic Republic and the Gallus Empire. Uh, no major characters ever piloted this thing. In New Century Zero, famously, uh, cannon tortoises were used in the fight between the Blitz team... And the Champ team, when Harry Champ hired uh, Jack Sisko to deploy his Lightning Sykes in, and they had to counter it with the Liger Zero Jaeger. And famously in that battle, and in the previous battles that they were training with as well, uh, Jack Sisko actually quite accurately said, 
to, uh, to use the cannon tortoise in that fight, in spite of the fact that Harry Champ had several other more powerful Zoids, like Dark Horns and Iron Kongs and Gojolas and things like that, that he could bring into the battle, the cannon tortoise was a deployed for a very niche specific purpose in that battle, and it fulfilled that purpose actually beautifully. Of course, it didn't really pay off in the end when Jack, Jack Sisko inevitably did not manage to defeat the Blitz team, and... Even if he did, he would have left Harry Champ uh, with no no credits from the battle, and he would have probably left his cannon tortoise incapacitated anyway because Jack Sisko is a conniving son of a bitch like that, as we all know. So, uh, in in that's about it for the cannon tortoise's significance in New Century Zero. In Fusors, there is no cannon tortoise necessarily, but there is a sort of a different breed of it called the Missile Tortoise. And we'll talk a little bit about the Missile Tortoise model kit, but essentially the Missile Tortoise is exactly the same as the Cannon Tortoise, but it, the model kit has sort of evolved a little bit, and they've added some new, some new newly molded pieces, and they turn it into a Blocks kit. And it is meant to combine with the Brachiozilla to make the Brachio Tortoise, which is... I guess a pretty cool fuser combiner, like the combined version does look a lot more complete than the Brachiozilla by itself. And in Zoids Versus 3, the, the Missile Tortoise is basically just a renamed uh, Buster Tortoise, and they only included that for the sake of having the... They only included that for the sake of having the Brachio Tortoise be a playable Zoid in Zoids Versus 3. <clears throat> In Zoid's Genesis, there is yet another iteration of the Cannon Tortoise. I think it's called the Beam Tortoise. And it what it appears that they have done, at least from what you can tell in the anime, is they've taken the 3D model from the Missile Tortoise and added this original cannon back onto it. So it does basically look like a retro Cannon Tortoise, which is interesting. And uh, that's about it for the anime. Uh, for the video games... So I initially kind of disregarded the cannon tortoise as weak and not reliable because you would think a tortoise would be slow, which it somewhat is. But in my most recent playthrough of uh, Zoids Battle Legends, a.k.a. Zoids Versus 2, I found out that the cannon tortoise is actually obscenely good, and especially in the early game of the of the Helic Republic campaign, the blue, the blue unicorn campaign. And so if you guys go ahead and watch that, you'll see what I'm talking about. And if you also watch the recent Zoids Battle Legends tier list video, I put the cannon tortoise in A tier. And the reasons for that is because the main cannon on it has, is very powerful, has great homing capabilities. It usually always hits its mark. And then it is capable of being equipped with a lot of other great weapons as well. So the initial... Uh, the, the cannons on the side here are not very effective at all. They're, you know, rapid fire and they deal very minimal damage. You might be able to take out some Molgas with that, but other than that, it's not, they're not going to be doing any significant damage. And then the, the cannon tortoise is capable of swapping these out for a weapon called the flexible booster, which is a weapon that I'll actually have a model kit version of that with the uh, Snipe Master I'm getting tomorrow from my friend Brad on a recent pickup he did, and we'll be able to talk about the Flexible Booster a little bit more. But that's a a accurate you know projectile beam weapon in the game, and it's incredibly effective. <laughs> so definitely check that out. I highly, highly recommend the Cannon Tortoise in the game. It has this spinning melee attack, and it does really well with boosters, and the mission where you would otherwise be forced to use a sniper type Zoid like the Gun Sniper or the Snipe Master, the Cannon Tortoise's homing projectiles uh, render that fight completely trivial, which is pretty cool. So that's about it for that. So moving on to the model kit itself. So originally the Cannon Tortoise was released as a small wind-up kit in the original uh, 1983 OJR line, and it had the exact same color scheme as what you're seeing right here with the HMM version. So when I compare it side by side to the Hasbro version, which the Hasbro version and the uh, NJR version are exactly the same. So this is the original uh, wind-up cannon tortoise that I've already done a review on. This guy is pretty dusty, which does add a little bit of nice little detailing to his sort of weathered, rugged military look. 
but essentially this would be the original Canon Tortoise, and the original 83 version is colored like this with the contrasting colors with sort of the OD green, so it, it you can tell pretty easily which one is the vintage and which one is the modern one, and obviously this is a modern Hasbro one, which I've talked about before. But there's a lot of other changes as well. Uh, I mentioned the Buster Tortoise. So the the Buster Tortoise is a it was released in like 2003, I think, as like some kind of special edition Canon Tortoise, uh, and it's this original same wind up version right here, but it's colored in blue and white and has the CP. I think it's four, which is the um, beam cannon on top of it and it's this massive cannon that goes on top of the Zoe the way it is right now and it sort of covers this cannon but it doesn't remove it whereas with the HMM Buster Tortoise it seems like they remove the main cannon altogether to sort of replace it with the Buster Cannon which is interesting so there is a HMM version of the Buster Tortoise as well like I mentioned and that's really about it for the different variants. There's obviously, like I said, the Missile Tortoise, which is a block zoid, and that Genesis one I mentioned was never actually made into a model kit. So we'll go ahead and set this guy aside. Also, I love how the scaling is turned up a little bit more to where, like, height-wise, they're almost the same height, but the HMM version is bigger in mostly every single dimension, except for the head. The head is actually bigger on the original, but I think it all scales very nicely with the HMM version. So we'll finally get in and talk about the nice little upgrades to the HMM version. So the amount of detail on this thing, needless to say, is incredible, as all the HMM model kits are. We'll go ahead and bring it really close to the camera so we can show that off. But one of the, I, I loved the build of this thing. It was one of the most fun... Well, I, I think I say that every time I build a new HMM and I get better and better at building them, but this was a really fun HMM build. It was probably uh, as much fun, if not more so, than the Godos. And I like how the cannon is assembled up here because it has these rods that run through here, these golden rods, which allow it to have different degrees of articulation. So it can kind of do, if I can show it off, I, they just sort of act as ways to support it. So when it tilts up and down, it's not just sitting on one pin that can easily pop out. But the coolest upgrade to the HMM version is the fact that it actually has a rotating turret, which the motorized one does not, or the wind-up one does not have at all. There's also additional details added to the guns on the side here with a little translucent piece right here. And there's also uh, two different types of translucent plastic you can put on this. There's the sort of translucent brown, which you can sort of see on the box art there. I want to kind of get the box out of the way because there's an awful glare on it, but you can see the, uh, the, the troops deploying out of it. You can see they're deploying cannon tortoises out of the little cargo things there. And you can see on the head is that sort of translucent brown plastic. And... You can either use that or you can use the more orange one like I've used here. And I sort of alternated between the two. Whereas with the guns up here, I put the translucent brown plastic. And with this translucent piece, this one on the little radar dish thing, and on the cockpit, I use the orange, which I like quite a bit. Even the tail has got a little bit of articulation to it as well, which I think is really cute. It's just got a little turtle tail that can move up and down like that. Now, on the original wind-up version, this back hatch back here would pop open, and there's nothing really in there. It's sort of just all the connecting pieces, but it kind of gives you the idea that maybe, you know, troops could deploy out of the back of that, similar to, you know, some kind of armored uh, ACP or something like that. But here on the HMM version, the back does not open, but instead you have on either side these pieces that flop down like this and fold out a little ramp like so, and the the ramp has got this nice texture to it. It just looks so cool, and it looks like it was actually really well designed with that function in mind. You can actually see the Zoid core on the inside there as well. And the way that you sort of build this is interesting because you sort of start with the bottom layer, and you kind of just build in a, like, attaching each leg section to the bottom, and you just kind of close it on top of itself like a, like a shell, uh, no pun intended. Speaking of the turtle shell, if you look at the bottom here, the details of the bottom of the turtle shell actually resemble a, a real-life turtle shell, which is interesting, and it's something I'm looking at right here that I realized, is that this piece right here was very, very well designed because the Zoid core itself is on this little uh, circular disc there, and so you sort of rotate 
this piece in on these grooves and when you rotate it to where it's tight, this uh, center line lines up perfectly which tells you that the zoid core is in there tight. And I think you can rotate that back out and have the zoid core sort of drop down out of it for maintenance or whatever reasons you would need to do that for. The legs are articulated, but not too much in the way of posability with this thing. It is a turtle after all. And of course we have the little pilot in there, which is nice. And the, the bottom of the feet, these little pads on the bottom of the feet like that are actually the same exact piece as what we have right here um, on above the head there. And if you look at the box, the box is actually not show that above the head there. It shows the empty slots there. And the instructions doesn't necessarily tell you to do this, it's not optional, but it gives you extra little feet pads and you can repurpose them on, on right here where it is. And a lot of the promotional artwork and the artwork on the instruction manual does show them there. And I think that is really, really cool. The model kit this complex, they were able to repurpose different pieces for different places on the Zoid. And I'm sure that, you know, it does give this a much more armored, much more rugged look, which I think is really cool. So, like I said, if you guys are interested in getting this guy, uh, he is available for pre-order again right now on certain sites, so you can go ahead and snag one if you want to. I would also highly recommend the HMM Buster Tortoise, and I have a wind-up Buster Tortoise on its way, and so I'll eventually do a review of that as well. But let's go ahead and finish out here and do a quick size comparison with the original, and then we're going to bring in the Bazoodle from Zoids Wild Zero because the Bazoodle is sort of the evolution of the Cannon Tortoise in a way because it is a tortoise with a cannon on it. And I think these all look really awesome next to each other. The color schemes are wildly different, but the aesthetic of them and sort of the, the lore purpose of them I think is really cool as well. And I went back and watched the Bazoodle review again recently and God, I just love this thing so much. It's one of the coolest, the coolest Zoids in the Zoids Wild Zero line. Cannon flips out like that. There we go. We have our, our Cannon Turtle Trio. Some uh, Teenage Mutant Cannon Tortoises, if you will. I'm sure that was a terrible pun. But um, yeah, so that's about it. So uh, next review is probably going to be the Gatling Fox from Zoids Wild Zero. And then after that, I have something very, very special planned. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.